All right, starting back again, this is comment four. I'm going to do a little bit of review in order to lead up to what seems to be a pretty climactic passage in here. We have here in verses 19 through 22 our first set of, as it were, historical trends for what would have been, well, for the church age. And then the same text applies literally to people during the actual seven years of the tribulation. That's dual entendre, all scriptural uh, prophecies, dual entendre. So here we're looking at verses 19 through 22. And the text in English is basically that part of the passage where it's talking about woe to women who are, you know, um, pregnant in those days, pray that you don't be f running on the Sabbath, idea of fleeing, idea of persecution, idea of advancing troops, wars and rumors of wars until I come. And then the cutoff of those days, by in this case, for the dual entendre part of the prophecy, in this case we're talking about the cutting off due to the rapture. Okay, in other words, the Christian persecution is going to get progressively worse over this period of time and in fact it has it was really bad in the beginning well I don't know we really can't prove how bad it was in the beginning but it did exist but most of the persecution that's existed about against Christians in history has been by other Christians particularly um, the Catholic Church has been um, executing most of the persecution which got started uh, under Constantine, that's a historical fact. The Church, of course, lies about it because the Roman Catholic Church lies about absolutely everything. It's just like Donald Trump. It's a liar. It doesn't know how to tell the truth. And so it kept, you know, fortunately God uses even a liar for something and it did keep good, you know, records of the copies of the scripture because they regarded it as something of a relic and they regarded themselves as important because they were copying the Bible. Never mind, they never knew how to read it. So that's why we have it. See, arrogant people are used by God just like non-arrogant people. Liars are used by God just as much as non-liars. And they never prosper in the end, but they think they are. And the rest of us who are actually here to learn him, well, we're the ones who end up inheriting the earth. They go under the earth. That's about the way history plays. And it's playing that way now. And that's what you're seeing on screen here in verses 19 through 22. Is that for all it seems to you in your life as a growing believer, you're constantly, you're constantly under pressure. You know, gastry is a, a very interesting analogy for the Lord to use. You know, on the surface, the stupid Christian who doesn't know anything about Bible is going to think of physical pregnancy and a female. But you're all pre we're all pregnant with something. We're all pregnant with some kind of knowledge. And the question is, is that knowledge going to give birth to what? You know, when it says, by your fruits you know them, it's the fruits of knowledge. If anybody would bother to actually read Matthew 7. Okay, here we're in Matthew 24, and now we're talking about, you know, um, tribulation. But it's tribulation of two kinds. You've got the slow burn tribulation of church, which takes on the characteristic of tribulation only because it wasn't supposed to exist. And that was the next set of historical trends that were supposed to play. And they're still playing, but now they're playing slow burn through church. Okay, and then you got the literal seven years of the tribulation, which these verses also apply to. So being pregnant is the bride of Christ is being developed to be pregnant with the knowledge of him. You know, learn and live on Bible, um, grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Second Peter 3.18. So this here is a historical trend of church age as well as little things that you want to be concerned about when you're living in the period of the actual tribulation. Okay? And those days are cut short for church. See, there's a parallel to every clause in here. I'm just trying to go fast. Unless those days are cut short for church, nobody in church would survive, but we get raptured. Okay, that's the, the parallel. You need to be reading this text with two eyes. One eye on, if there had been no church, tribulation was supposed to be next. So then you read it vis-a-vis -vis the tribulation literal. But since church gets inserted after he talks and he knows that's going to happen, 
because he announced it back in Matthew 16. Now he's giving you the, the typical, like Old Testament, dual entendre prophecy that you're supposed to learn. So as a historical trend during church, we are pregnant with him in order to give birth to eternity. Okay, that's something the Holy Spirit does, playing mom again. All right, and then those days get cut short by means of the, um, you know, the rapture for us. The days get cut short, of course, in the tribulation, literally, as the text explains. All right, so that's how you interpret first trend. You're going to be running. You're going to be under pressure. You're going to be fleeing. You're going to be persecuted. It can be a mild persecution of disdain. It can be, you know, an intense physical persecution like happens to Christians in Arab countries. Christians in Muslim countries. Muslims are disgusting. Islam is really a terrorist ideology pretending to be a religion. It is totally satanically sponsored. And actually the Quran itself tells you that. If I live long enough, I'll do videos to show you where in the Quran you can see that. But you can talk to almost anybody who's a Christian and used to be a Muslim, and he can probably tell you that too. Like Wally Chubat probably could be a good guy to talk to. All right, so this is church age historical trend of fleeing, of being persecuted, of being burdened with child until Christ is born in you. What was that? You just threw that at me. Where was that? Galatians 4.19. Okay, so that's the, that's the characteristic of church age. This is a characteristic of church age as well as literally true for the tribulation when it happens. That's why it's 119. That's why it's 7 short of 126. 126 stands for Temple Down. I did the Isaiah 53 video showing you that. It's two candlesticks. Okay, he's taking the 7 out because church ends before. The tribulation starts and the text is about what happens when the tribulation starts and so the people alive then will be somehow they're gonna know this meter maybe that's why I know it now to prepare for them you know I often wonder why me why a female but God's got a sense of humor so maybe that's part of it okay 119 is 126 minus 7 that's that's just math Okay, so start of the trib, it fits. The meter fits the text, which it always does. That's the purpose of having the meter, is to get better understanding of the text. Okay, so that's first characteristic. Fleeing, being burdened, um, being at the end of your rope, being persecuted, being tired. You know, because you're, you're persecuted just by learning and living on Bible. Even if it, there's nobody physically at you. Your whole day is persecuting you. That's, that's the idea here. Okay. Then, here it gets a little bit, it seems a little bit easier to understand. This is about, oh, Christ has returned. And, you know, he's telling you, no, you know, here we go. The, the, it'll be as obvious as the stars rising, okay, and setting in the west, my return. So don't believe anybody. You know, we got that today. This is an easy passage to understand. Second main characteristic of church age. And of course, it will also be literally true during the tribulation. In the church age, we've got a lot of people telling us, telling us, Oh, I'm Christ returned. There's some guy in Brazil who's calling himself Henry Christ. There's some lady on YouTube calling herself the Maitreya. As if Christ can be male or female because so many females are so, what do you want to call it, insecure that they can't stand it that somebody might be called son of God. So they have to change it into daughter of God. Hello? Can you be more insecure than that? And your identity is not your gender. Your identity is not your skin color. Your identity is not your race. Your identity is not your nationhood. Your identity is son of God. Even if you're a girl. He made you. Directly, at birth, the real you is your soul. Not anything about your ethnicity, your body, your gender, your culture, or anything else about you on the outside. Your father is God. So if you are, you know, insecure, there, remove your insecurity. You are actually a son or daughter of God, doesn't matter what your gender is. But God made you directly because he wanted your existence. It doesn't get more high status than that. Moving on. If someone says, oh, looky here. Here's Christ. 
you're supposed to ignore them because when he actually comes it's going to be more obvious than the sun flashing in the west to the east east to the west is what it's saying in the, the text all right so one of the second characteristics about this period which has got a 168 which is 284 is back to back decree syllables like in moses because he's playing on moses see, we get that start here see since the beginning that's where our Acris is right here okay the second characteristic is all Christ has returned or it's the Maitreya or we're all Christ or something else that's just you know anything but the Bible so he's saying don't listen to that just ignore it see they're all liars okay now that's characterized with 284s which means it's a bookend in other words, throughout the period of the church age. This isn't necessarily throughout the period of the church age. This is sporadic. That's why it's 119. Okay? See, 119 has to, is, a, is a shoot off of 126, which is in Isaiah, which was a specific period of time, 126 years from when Isaiah wrote. So it wasn't going to happen forever. It wasn't going to happen throughout. It was just going to happen for a certain segment of time. So for certain segments of time, you will be under pressure like this. Okay? Throughout, however, the whole of church age, just as throughout the whole of the tribulation, it's, it's, a, it's a, going to be a satanic tactic to introduce false Christs. Okay? And we've seen, and it's, it's been happening now. It's been happening for a long time. I mean, I don't know. You could probably just Google and find out how many people right now are claiming to be Jesus Christ back to earth. There's a whole bunch of them. There always has been. So then this is not this is prophetic because Christ is saying it himself in 30 AD. But it's not hard to prove. So here he is. Oh, I'm Christ. He said it in 30 AD. If you have a little bit of doubt and you think, well, I'm not sure the Bible is really the Word of God. Honey, go Google on this on how many people think that they're Jesus Christ. Okay, hospitals used to be full of these people. They either thought they were Christ or they thought they were Muhammad or they thought they were uh, Napoleon. Okay, here he's telling you, hi, a whole bunch of people are going to tell you I'm Christ returned. So that's come true a lot during our time. Just like he said it would. And it's going to keep on being true. Just like he said it will be. Okay? And it's all a lie. And he's telling you, hi, the real proof of me is going to flash right from the sky. You'll see it directly yourself. From the east to the west. So you don't worry about when Christ returns. Now what's interesting about this passage is that this whole section here, the flash from the east to the west, technically speaking, He's talking, you know, the far meaning of the prophecy is the trib itself. It will be a physical, actual appearance that everybody on earth will see him do the touchdown at Mount of Olives, just like Zechariah was saying. He's talking back to Zechariah when he says that. But it also has a sort of um, parallel, near implication, near meaning could happen today, of the rapture. Because we will see him. Okay, he and the angels sort of like come into the second heaven or third heaven, but nobody sees him but us, because we're going up there, and we meet him, that's 2 Thessalonians 4.17. The Greek word there is harpazo, and the, the Latin translation of that same verb is uh, rapto, which is where we get the English term rapture, unlike what the stupid idiot not knowing Bible Calvinists claim. It was not an invention of the 19th century. It's right there in scripture. The verb rapto in Latin is the translation of Greek harpazo, which is in 2 Thessalonians 4.17. Okay, so the Calvinists are just liars against the Bible. Anyhow, just like Catholics, there's nothing you can do about that. But what you can do is notice, oh, it's going to be obvious when Christ returns. Yeah, because you're going to be checking out of this body. So that's the third characteristic, or second characteristic of the age. Everybody's going to pretend that Christ has come back. But when he really comes, it's going to be obvious. It's going to be obvious at the trip because you're going up there to meet him in the air. Second Thessalonians 4.17. We'll elaborate on this 
highlighted in blue passage. Okay? It's going to be obvious to the trib people because it's the real second advent. He's coming from this guy. We're going to come with him at that point on horses for crying out loud. And, you know, if you got the laws of it, it's based on the laws of optics. If he's coming from a certain point in the sky that's far enough away, everybody on earth will see him. I'm not sure everybody will on earth will see him at that same moment. But apparently we're going to, it's going to be, we're going to go slow coming back to earth. So at nighttime, all over the world when it's nighttime, everybody will see him. So I guess it's like, maybe it's a 24 hour period, I'm just guessing. Point is, is that it's obvious, see? The stars that flash from the east to the west. Okay? Just like the flashes in the sky. So it's obvious, it's not hidden. All right. The 168 double bookends, double 84s. Why double 84? 84 was used by Moses in Psalm 90. Isaiah split it into 242s. Peter uses it also. And it seems like the number one usage of it is for A, Christ, or B, the temple. It means decree and the completion of the decree. But it's a specific kind of decree, the decree about Christ. So that explains why, because this text is about Christ. All right, because when you go look at the passages where the 84 meter is used, the decrees are right and they're about Christ. Isaiah 53, of course, is famously about Christ. Psalm 90, verse 4 is where it becomes 84 syllables. And that is about the day of the Lord. It says a thousand years. So that's about Christ. And then when Peter does his, his dateline meter in uh, First Peter, he uses 84 to make a song playing on, on Paul. And he's using 84 there for the temple, because Christ is the temple the temple depicts. So the downfall of the temple, directly about Jesus Christ, directly about the timing of Christ, all those are 84s. So double 84 because he's God, man, ha ha. Easy to remember. Okay? And what I really wanted to get into, and it took me longer than I expected, I really wanted to get into this third part, because it's this third part that's so crazy. Okay, our summary, gastry, you're pregnant, so you're a burden to anyhow, and, you know, you're under all kinds of pressure and persecution. That's the first characteristic of your life during the church age, and except that the days get cut short for you, you wouldn't survive. Okay, second characteristic is there's going to be a lot of false cries. Okay, but the real one is obvious, not false. Okay, that's verse 27 telling you obvious, not false. Okay, and then it's double 84 bookends because it's about Christ, Christ, temple, uh, decree about Christ and temple, Psalm 90, verse 4, um, Isaiah uh, 52, 13 and 14, Isaiah 53, 12 splits the 84 bookend, and then Peter uses it as his first date line in First Peter. Go look at my Vimeo channels. I did channels on each of those chapters so that you can see the actual display of the meter yourself. Now here, for our third thing, this seems like, oh, you know, this is really weird. Um, you know, the, after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon and blood will be... And it's like, what? How does that apply to church age? Well, it's metaphorical, and I'll cover that in the next increment.